asking the questions mainstream journalists will never ask. This is your Richie Allen Show on RichieAllen.co.uk, Fab Radio 2 in Manchester, and TriggerWarning.tv. Huge interest, of course, as there should be, in what's happening in Palestine. And I'll tell you something. I've been covering this issue for many years and often frustrated have I been at the fact that it's very difficult to get people interested in it. People historically have not wanted to know about Palestine, about Israel and all of that. <clears throat> Excuse me. But there's huge interest in it these last few days and maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. But we're going to talk about that anyway uh, as we kick off. There's a few very interesting things I've observed while watching the coverage of this on UK and international media today. So there has been widespread continued coverage of the massacre, the slaughter in Gaza, because that's what it is. Funerals were held today for 58 Palestinians killed yesterday when Israeli troops opened fire during protests. It's been said a, a lot that yesterday was the deadliest day of violence there since 2014 Operation Protective Edge. There was a death reported today, a 51-year-old man, but what is it now? It's just after 9pm in Gaza and it has been said that things have been calm or calmer. Israel has been condemned by the United Nations, by the UK, kind of, by France, Russia and others. You heard in the news there Israel defended itself, saying that it had the right to defend itself. And the US, unsurprisingly, doubled down on its support of Israel today. The violence coincided with the opening of the embassy in Jerusalem, of course, which has been a controversial thing. Palestinians, in case you're new to the history of the region, and some people are, again, harking back to what I said about trying to get people interested in this over the years. A lot of people really don't know. They're not dumb. They're not stupid. They just have no idea. Well, Palestinians rightfully claim East Jerusalem as the capital of a future Palestinian state. Hence the division internationally over the US recognising Jerusalem as belonging to Israel. Now, the UN, the UN Human Rights Council has asked for an urgent investigation into the use of live ammunition and to the terrible death toll, right? Right, OK. Here's Sky News today and Kay Barley. Have a listen to this. Hello, a very good afternoon. There's been more bloodshed on the Gaza border with Israeli forces shooting dead a Palestinian man as funerals are held for the 60 people who were killed during demonstrations yesterday. The excessive force has been condemned globally with the UN human rights expert Michael Link saying the shootings are akin to an eye for an eyelash. He says there needs to be true accountability and has called on the Israeli government to cease its lethal assault. The rules on the use of force under international law have been repeated many times but appear to have been no ignored again and again. It seems anyone is liable to be shot dead or injured. Women, children, press personnel, first responders, bystanders and at almost any point up to 700 meters from the fence. We stress again, lethal force may only be used as a measure of last, not first, resort and only when there is an immediate threat to life or serious injury. An attempt to approach or crossing or damaging the Green Line fence do not amount to a threat of serious, uh, to life or serious injury and are not sufficient grounds for the use of live ammunition. Right, that was Rupert Colville. He's a spokesman for the Human Rights Council. Like I said, there was condemnation at an emergency meeting in the United Nations last night. By the way, here's the US ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley. I asked my colleagues here in the Security Council, who among us would accept this type of activity on your border? No one would. No country in this chamber would act with more restraint than Israel has. In fact, the records of several countries here today suggest they would be much less restrained. 
Right, that's Nikki Haley, a Zionist bootlick. What else would you expect from Nikki Haley? So why is today, the 15th of May, important or special to the Palestinians? Special is probably the wrong word to use. Well, it's the Nakba today, which is a term as it comes from the um, the so-called, it's hilarious, they call it a war. They call it a war, the so-called Arab-Israeli war. Well, it began on this day back in 1948, which was the day after Israel declared independence when British control of the land was coming to an end, the Palestine Mandate, which was illegal in and of itself anyway. Now, you you might know this, this might be old ground for you, but again, a lot of people coming to this programme are new to this type of of a program and new to this information so they might not know what happened was Arabs indigenous people who lived there were expelled by the Israeli army and by terrorist groups like the Stern Gang and the Haganah it was terrible Irish people think black and tans the worst of the worst I'll give you an idea in 1947 Jews owned less than 6% of the land and they made up just over 30% of the population. Well, due to the activities of terrorists employed by the Israeli government, terrorists themselves, by 1949, two years later, Israel had 80% of the land and their terrorist mobs had forced nearly 800,000 non-Jews from the country. This is the truth. This is the fact of the matter. So today, in 2018, you've got 5 million Palestinians registered as refugees by the United Nations. Where are they? Well, they're in the Gaza Strip, obviously, the West Bank, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, and some of them are in East Jerusalem. A third of them are still living in refugee camps. And you know by now about the Gaza blockade. Gaza is, in effect, an open-air prison it is a, it, it, it is, it's almost incomprehensible, the conditions that people are forced to live in in Gaza today. So every year on this day, Palestinians come together to demonstrate and to commemorate the Nakba. Sometimes they carry symbolic keys. The keys represent their lost homes. You might have seen some of the pictures. So the political reaction to this today... Well, Shadow Foreign Secretary Emily Thornberry put an urgent question to the Foreign Office, which is headed up by Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson is the Foreign Secretary, and every secretary, every top minister has a shadow in the opposition party. So Boris Johnson should have heard the urgent question from Emily Thornberry. But amazingly... And I've been covering news and politics and current affairs for 20 years. It'll be 20 years this year. I've never seen anything like what I saw happen today. And I'm not being melodramatic. As Emily Thornbury got to her feet, Boris Johnson ran out of the House of Commons, out of the chamber, legged it, legged it. And I posted an image of this to Twitter earlier on. And he was caught by the balls. Because obviously there are cameras in the chamber, many of them, and media outlets with license to, with permission to cover what's happening in the House of Commons, they've got access to the cameras. So you can see this buffoon, this crazy haired clown, jumping up out of his seat, running away, so that he doesn't have to be put in a situation where he might have to criticise Israel. What a Zionist whore he is. Unbelievable. It's unbelievable that Emily Thornbury didn't begin by saying, where the fuck are you going? Where in the name of fuck are you going, pal? She watched him running out of the chamber. So a lackey, another minister, somebody a little bit further down the trough from Johnson, took the question from Thornbury. Here's some of what Thornbury had to say 
today. Have a listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what makes yesterday's events all the worst is that they didn't come as a result of some accidental overreaction to one day's protests, but as the result of a culmination of six weeks, an apparently calculated and deliberate policy to kill and maim unarmed protesters who pose no threat to the forces on the Gaza border. Many of them shot in the back Many of them shot hundreds of meters from the border, and many of them children. Yeah. And if we are in any doubt, Mr. Speaker, about the lethal intent of the Israeli snipers working on the border, I'm afraid we only need to look at the wounds suffered by their victims. Listen to this now. Listen to her describing the wounds that are being seen by journalists in the region and by medics. Listen to her describe the wounds on these poor, misfortunate creatures, these Palestinians, these innocents who are being shot at by these cowardly bastard IDF snipers. Listen to how she describes the wounds. Tim's. On hunting websites, Mr. Speaker, in America, they regularly debate the merits of 7.6 millimeter bullets versus the 5.5 millimeter bullets. The latter, they say, is effective when you want to wound multiple internal organs, while the former is preferred by some because, and I quote, it is designed to mushroom and fragment, to do maximum internal damage to the animal. And it was this ammunition, it is alleged, that was used in Gaza yesterday against men, women and children. On the very first day of the violence, Mr Speaker, the UN Secretary General called for an independent investigation into those incidents. And last night, the Kuwaiti government asked the UN Security Council to agree a statement doing the same, only to be vetoed by the United States. And while I agree with every word of that Kuwaiti statement, it is easy to see why the US vetoed it, because it was critical of their Jerusalem embassy move. Yeah, well, that goes without saying. Thornbury then asked the government minister standing in for Johnson, she asked that the UK government issue a strong official statement on the slaughter and that demands of Israel be made in that statement. A statement that no country could reasonably object to, not even the United States, unless they are prepared to make the case that there is one rule for the government of Israel and another one for everyone else. And I believe that the investigation must just be the start of an effort at the UN and elsewhere to bring urgent and concerted international pressure on the Netanyahu government to lift the illegal blockade on Gaza and comply with all the UN resolutions ordering them to remove their illegal settlements and end their illegal occupation of Palestinian territories. If yesterday's death can act as a catalyst for that action, then at least they will not have been in vain. And in the interim, especially as the protests resume today, will the Minister of State join me in urging the Israeli forces serving on the Gaza border to show some ov long overdue responsibility to their fellow human beings and stop this vicious slaughter. Yeah, yeah, she's got bigger balls than Jeremy. That would be Jeremy Corbyn. Her leader sat to her right. Jeremy's not had much to say about it. Jeremy has been emasculated. He's had his merry little todger chopped off by the Zionist lobby here in the UK. So Jeremy's not got much to say. So who was Thornbury speaking to? Well, she was speaking to Alastair Burt. Who the hell is he, Richie? He's a nobody. He's the fool that was put in to bat for Johnson who ran with his tail on his hoofs out of the chamber to avoid speaking about Israel. So Alastair Burt, in response to Thornbury, said this. Now remember, you heard on the news, Burt said the usual things. Israel has the right to defend itself, blah, blah, blah. Hamas are taking advantage of the Nakba and taking advantage of the US embassy being placed in Jerusalem to urge people to commit attacks on Israel, blah, blah, blah. The usual bullshit. But it was interesting, this was one of the things Burt said in response to Shadow Foreign Secretary Emily Thornbury. But if I might say in conclusion to the Honourable Lady, there was an element missing in her response. And that is not to mention at all any possible complicit involvement of Hamas with the events. 
in all in all fairness, if if we are if we are to look at the circumstances of this, we need to take that into account. It is very easy and very tempting to take one side or the other. And if uh, if any of us have made statements about this in the last 24 hours, it's very clear the views out there are completely binary. There is no acceptance of those who support the state of Israel, of an understanding in the circumstances of Gaza, and there is no understanding uh, of uh, those who've supported the Palestinian cause of any circumstances that might affect Israel and the impact should the border be breached and there should be attacks on the Israeli side of the border. The United Kingdom will not get into that. Oh, the U- UK won't get into that at all. It's the same old nonsense, isn't it? It really sounds, if you're new to this problem, if you're new to the genocide and the apartheid committed by Israel, you might think that there is a strong distinction between the US response to what happened yesterday and the UK response to it, but there isn't at all. It's all lip service in capital letters. We'll hear from Theresa May shortly. You know, we condemn and refer... No, not condemn. May wouldn't say condemn. We're concerned about the violence. We're concerned about it. Well, how about airstrikes on on, on Tel Aviv? How about that? How about airstrikes on Jerusalem? How about airstrikes on IDF positions on the border with Gaza to prevent them murdering these innocent people? How about that? But you know what, dear listener? I've never been a hypocrite in my life. I don't want to see airstrikes on on, on, on on Tel Aviv. I don't want to see airstrikes on Jerusalem. I don't want to see airstrikes on anybody. At all. But as a journalist who's supposed to keep your own opinion out of it, I'd be asking that question. You're very quick to identify human rights violations around the world and fly in your tornadoes and bomb targets, military targets. Why don't you bomb the absolute piss out of the IDF? Stop the murdering children and lying about it. Hamas, Hamas, Hamas. Now the global media coverage of this massacre threw up some very interesting sound bites. Not least one that came from RTE Television. That's the Irish National broadcaster. Here's Israeli spokeswoman Michal Mayan. I've probably pronounced that wrong and I apologise for that. It's a Michal Mayan. She's an Israeli spokeswoman and she's speaking to an RTE reporter. That's RTE Ireland. Government spokeswoman Michal Mayan before the scale of today's casualties became clear why the Israeli forces were shooting dead protesters at the Gaza crossings. Well, we can't put all these people in jail. These are, we're talking about hundreds of people that are attacking the fence. And I can tell you that the IDF, our military, is not aiming to kill. It is aiming to deter people from moving. And we can also see that amongst these 40 people, uh, if I'm not mistaken, about uh, a dozen or more, even 20 people, were known Hamas terrorists. So again, we're not trying to kill anyone, but we have to defend our borders. And that's what every country would have done. And I think Ireland would do the same if their borders were be under jeopardy as well. Ireland would do fuck all. We've got about seven boats in our navy. Right. Did you hear that? Just in case you missed her response to his question, which was why are the IDF or why is the IDF shooting dead Palestinians at the Gaza crossings? Listen again to her response. Why the Israeli forces were shooting dead protesters at the Gaza crossings. Well, we can't put all these people in jail. Just in case you missed it. Well, we can't put all these people in jail. And again. Well, we can't put all these people in jail. Because we can't put all these people in jail was her first response before she caught herself, before she gathered herself and then moved on to say that the IDF is not trying to kill them. This is the psychopathy of the state of Israel. And most of those in authority in Israel, not most Israelis, most of those in authority are wackier than fucking Hannibal Lecter. Lunatics. Why are you killing people at the border? Well, we can't put them in jail, you know. Oh, Jesus Christ. We can't put them in jail. We've no room for them. Why? Well, because all their children are in jail. 
you know, for throwing stones and stuff. We've no room, so we might as well take shooting practice. Shooting practice. Unbelievable. Here you go again. Well, we can't put all these people in jail. Can't put them in jail, so just just kill them. Fuck it, you know. There'll be a bit of condemnation here and there, but the, the good old boys, you know, Bo and Luke Duke, that'd be the US and the UK, they'll always veto any resolutions. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Move on, nothing to see here. 26 minutes past the hour. A little bit more on what's going on there when we come back. This is your Richie Allen Show, live on richieallen.co.uk, Fab Radio 2, Tune In Radio and TriggerWarning.tv. Have you lost access to important data from a computer hard drive, mobile phone, or other storage device? Maybe you have a broken hard drive containing years of information, or a smartphone that no longer works from which you'd like the pictures, movies, and chats recovered. If you would like to recover data from any type of digital device, including desktop and laptop computers, external hard drives, cameras, smartphones, NAS, and RAID servers, then contact Data Clinic today at dataclinic.co.uk now. There's a place high in the mountains of Spain, a sanctuary where souls gather from all around the globe to learn about themselves and experience powerful changes in the way we see our world. They become awakened to their gifts and their power to heal others. Become part of this ever-growing worldwide family of unique, pure energy healing practitioners. Discover how amazing you truly are. Go to www. W.markbayerski.com. It could just change your life forever. Introducing the H2O app, a powerful water structure and application that programs vibrational energies into water through the use of different sound frequencies. Once programmed, the use of water for drinking, cooking, bathing. Give it to your friends and colleagues or spread it around the garden. The list goes on. It's not just water that the app can be used for either. It's great for programming crystals too. The H2O app is free to download and is available on both Android and Apple platforms. For further information, go to h2oapp.online. The Richie Allen Show relies on your support. Go to richieallen.co.uk and set up a monthly donation today. Welcome back to the most listened to independent radio show in Europe. It's your Richie Allen Show. Thank you to Michael Jetson for sending me the link to waronwant.org. Uh, I did retweet it. Concrete actions you can take to stand up for Palestine. One of the things you can do is never, ever, ever buy anything that is made or partly made or even one-tenth made in Israel. Forget the occupied territories. Buy Israel or buy anybody associated with Israel. Don't buy that shit. Just don't buy it. And tell others. And be rational and be lucid. Be lucid when telling other people what this tyrannical terrorist apartheid regime is doing. All the time. It just so happens because of the embassy that the world's media happens to be on what's going on there. That goes on all the time. They don't stop, you know. <laughs> this is the thing. Liz tweets, uh, I've been so confused as to why they would do this with the world's eyes on them on the anniversary. Then it hit me. Blood sacrifice, says Liz. That might be true. I don't know. I do know they don't care. They don't care. Moinga tweets in response to that, everything with these people is always calculated. Nothing is ever a coincidence. Hi to Lance Burkett. How you doing, Lance? Nice to know you're listening to the programme today. To Martin in Spain. Uh, to Cartoon Drunk. Let me squeeze uh, up there. To Tia Zimmerman. How you doing, Tia? Uh, to Malik as well. Thanks for tweeting the programme. To Deborah. How you doing, Deborah? Israeli officials condemn the Holocaust, yet act this way. They are the most racist people on earth says uh, Deborah there. Sue asks the question, why isn't the UK ambassador being recalled from Israel? Why is the Israeli ambassador not being expelled? Why, says Sue? Because this country, Sue, like the United States of America, its politicians are controlled by Israel. It's a fact. It's as simple as that. Of course they're not going to expel them. Now, the Turks... And the South Africans recalled their envoys from uh, Tel Aviv 
have called him back, um, which is interesting. I, I, as far as I know, and I've been on air now for a half an hour, I can't see that any other nation has pulled its ambassadors out of Israel. I know the Irish cowards won't do that. Um, I know the, the, the UK cowards won't do it either. Yeah. Hi to Seth and hi to David. Hi to Base Ninja. The actions of Israel is more than shocking. Pity I live in a country that openly funds and supports it. That is the UK, says Base Ninja. Uh, there. there are a lot of tweets coming in on this. Um, another 20 have just come in. So, right. Somebody called Free Spirit is weighing in. And uh, Free Spirit says, this is at J Ledger 2011, that land was Israel's land even before the Quran was written. Check the Bible. It's all in the Bible. The Bible is bullshit. Israel never existed. Jews. Jews are not a race. Jews are not not an ethnicity. They are people who believe in a fairy godfather in the sky, just like Christians and Muslims. There is no evidence, not a shred, linking a group of people called the Jews to that region ever. It's a lie. It hasn't been Jewish land for thousands of years. They are illegal occupiers. They are squatters. They are bad gypsies. Most gypsies come through a town. They're all right. They stay at the halting site. They do their thing and they move on. But there's always a few. There's always a few gypsies who will park their caravans in a sports field that doesn't belong to them and call carnage. The Israelis are those fucking gypsies. They don't belong there. Ever. Historically, ever don't belong there. And I support the two-state solution. This is the irony of my rant, of my tirade. I'm livid at what's going on. But I would support the pre-67 border two-state solution. But I can understand why Palestinians won't accept it. They won't accept it because Israelis, Israel has no right to be there. Ever. And, and, and their only claim to legitimacy is this biblical bollocks. That's it, full stop. It's in the Bible. Right. Okay. There's a lot of things in the Bible. <laughs> right. 27 minutes to the top of the air. It's maddening. It's maddening when you hear that nonsense. Don't, never in history was there a group of people called the Jews in that region. Never. No evidence to support that. So how are things looking now? Spoke yesterday about how BBC and Sky reporters were reporting from field hospitals. Not that there are many of them. How's it looking today? Just before I came on air, the BBC spoke live to a Red Cross medic, a woman called, uh, uh, again the pronunciations, it's uh, Aliona Sinenko, that's right. Aliona Sinenko is a Red Cross medic and she was spoken to by BBC News 24 just before I came on air and the question she has asked, you will hear her response, is she was asked to describe the injuries. This is what she said. I'm not a ballistic expert and the, the like, what is important is that there are many injuries in the limbs and there are many uh, like gunshot wounds and many, most of these injuries, they, they, they require uh, serious surgical treatment and multiple interventions and that they require for a patient to stay in the hospital for several months. And uh, some of the injuries have, will have some of the patients uh, losing their limbs and uh, that will have a long-standing consequences for their, uh, for their also for their uh, situation. What is the kind of level of resource that you have there when we're looking at sort of medicines and drugs and resources? Because clearly you said yourself it was quite chaotic yesterday. Um, how are you dealing in terms of your supplies? We were extremely relieved uh, because we managed to receive two trucks of emergency medical supplies uh, just the day before the day before yesterday. So we could uh, continue donation, uh, making donations to the uh, Ministry of Health in Gaza. But the, the, I think that the point, the, the healthcare system is reaching 
the, it's reaching its limits. It's reaching the limits not only in terms of medical resources, but also the human resources, because the situation did not start yesterday. There's been violence going on for the last month, and the medical, the doctors and the nurses just like overwhelmed and tired, and they haven't had any respite in the last months. So uh, right now we are dealing with the situation and we have the necessary resources, but if the violence continues, uh, we risk, if the risk is very high that the medical system will just collapse. Yeah, the medical system is just going to collapse. That's what's meant to happen. This is what the blockade has caused, of course, as well. Lovely situation, isn't it? People having amputations, people minding their own business, children shot in the back with these bullets that Emily Thornbury described earlier on, these seven point whatever millimetre bullets that exit the body, this mushroom impact that just causes catastrophic damage to multiple organs in the body. It's lunacy. Theresa May is meeting the Turkish president Tayyip Erdogan. He's in London and they both made statements on Palestine today and they made them just after 6pm UK time. Luckily for me, I was able to catch what they said. There is obviously a discernible difference between the Theresa May response and the Tayyip Erdogan response. Here's Theresa May. The loss of life we have seen is tragic and extremely concerning. Such violence is destructive to peace efforts and we call on all sides to show restraint. There is an urgent need to establish the facts of what happened yesterday through an independent and transparent investigation including why such a volume of live fire was used and what role Hamas played in events. Palestinians have the right to protest, but these protests must be peaceful. We are concerned that extremist elements are seeking to hijack legitimate protests to further their own objectives. And while we do not question the right of Israel to defend its borders, the use of live fire and the resulting loss of life is deeply troubling. We urge Israel to show restraint. It is in everyone's interest for peace and stability to prevail in Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories. Yes, but Israel wasn't defending its borders, you cloth-eared bint. It wasn't defending its borders because its borders were not being overrun. Deeply troubling, deeply concerning. Have I said the right things there? Have I, Benjamin? Yes, Teresa, that will do. You can say troubling, you can say concerning, you can say cause for concern, you can say deeply worrying, but you can't say anything else. And you're only allowed to say those things for 36 hours, and then you've got to shut up, Teresa. You understand? Yes, sir. It's the way it goes. So Tayyip Erdogan, then, the Turkish president, he had something a little different to say. Remember, the Turks have recalled their ambassador to Israel, and uh, as the South Africans have as well. Listen to the Turkish president. And I would like to extend my condolences to the families of those who have lost their lives as a result of the incidents taking place in Palestine. And I wish an expeditious recovery to all those who have been injured. And I am condemning these uh, actions in your presence. But I would like to underline one more fact. Going back to the year 1948, Palestine was settled on all of the lands currently occupied by Israel and in the aftermath of the 1948 developments Israel kept on assuming more and more land so Palestine had been confined into a pond full of space on those lands and as you can clearly see Israel is the occupant of a vast land this is unacceptable I'm strong that's why I have the right is the mentality that we have to shy away from and this is the mentality led by Israel in the region and with these steps taken forward by Israel, Israel, in our point of view, is not right. And Israel is an occupant power and still raging terrorism. And, frankly speaking, without any further ado, the international community and the United Nations should mobilize their capabilities in order to stop this oppression once and for all. That's interesting. I don't know what he meant by that. I suppose he meant nothing. 
mobilising the international community to stop it happening again. He couldn't have meant UN peacekeeping troops. The UN must be invited to provide peacekeeping troops. The Israelis would have to invite them. The Palestinians don't have enough status to be inviting the UN peacekeeping troops in, so that's not going to happen anyway. Did he mean sanctions? It's never going to happen either. It's 20 minutes to the top of the hour. We're going to leave it for for now. There was something on Fox News which was mildly of interest. The New York Times front page seems to be very critical of the slaughter in Gaza. And Fox News took exception to that and did a laughable segment, but I'm not going to play it because I think you've had enough of it. I don't mean you've had enough of it. I don't mean to to be disrespectful to um, people in Gaza. But there is a, a bit of overkill. Uh, you have to worry about that as well. And, you know, I, I meant what I said earlier on. For years, I invited people on from the uh, from Tel Aviv. Journalists, often journalists with the Jerusalem Post. I invited Israelis on whom were against the occupation onto various programmes that I presented. And it was a huge turnoff for the audience. And it wasn't because we got one or two or three complaints, which don't mean a damn thing when you're talking about many thousands of listeners but the volume of not complaints but the 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 volume of criticism from people who just did not want to know didn't want to know uh, largely because they said they didn't understand it and of course the media has done its duty there The, the media is largely responsible for 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 people not really understanding what happened to get us to where we are today. You know, the illegal sykes Picot Agreement, the illegal Balfour Declaration, the illegal partitioning of Palestine, the forcible removal of 800,000 non-Jews. People just don't have any knowledge of that. None. Nor did they understand that Israel's only claim to legitimacy is the biblical one, and they also say, well, international recognition holds up as well. Those are the only two bases. Uh, on which Israel says, we have a right to be here. Historically, it doesn't have a right to be there. But anyway, 17 and a half minutes to the top of the hour. I'm going to take a bit of music, and I would say, and I'm going to dedicate this song, not that they will hear it, not today anyway, to Palestinian men, women and children everywhere, whether you're in the occupied territories, whether you're in Jerusalem, whether you're in the UK, Ireland, Scotland, wherever. They'll never beat you. They'll never beat you. No tyrannical, oppressive regime has ever succeeded in history. As long as you stick to your principles, as long as you have the courage to keep getting up, keep going to the border, keep demanding that the international community comes to your aid, whether it looks like they will or whether they won't, as long as you do that, they'll never beat you. They'll never get rid of you. And that's what they want to do. They want rid of you, they want you out of there. But as long as you're standing up to them, as long as you're standing side by side, shoulder to shoulder, and you'll walk in the face of the horrendous weaponry that they're firing on you, and their planes flying over and dropping bombs on you, as long as you keep standing up to them, and pulling your trousers down and sticking your arses up in the air at them, they'll never defeat you. This is for everybody who's been affected by that. Uh, today.